which is really a double exercise. It's, first of all, just to remind you how to calculate a standard deviation, which is critical for knowing, to, for knowing how to do chapter seven. You always got to keep calculating standard deviations, but also to remind you of the theory and to make the theory a little more concrete. The basic idea is that when you know the sigma, when the sigma is known, you go to the z. And when, it, when the sigma is unknown, of course, you go to the t. But you would think that as the sample size gets larger and larger, the sigma is unknown, you go to the t. But you would think that the, the t, which represents how much uncertainty there is about the measure of the standard deviation, as the sample size gets larger and larger, you'd expect that the, that the, that the uh, that as, you know, gets, uh, gets larger, then the, the S, which is a measure of the standard deviation, should get closer and closer to the true answer of the whole population. In fact, it turns out to be true. So what I want you to do is simply that common sense idea, which of course can be proven mathematically, is common sense. The third way of proving it is by doing this on the spinner assignment, number 29, I believe. 29. And I want you to basically do, fill out the following chart with some, some you know, corresponding data. The sample size and the standard deviation. I want you to take a sample size of two numbers. Now, how do you get the sample size of two numbers? Well, you can either pick them up out of the back of the book or use ran between and ran between twice. Highlight those two numbers or highlight the column of two numbers and have the computer, as you should have done many times till now, calculate the standard deviation for you. If you want to do it by hand, and if we were doing this in class, I would say do it by hand, but we're doing this on a computer, so have the, now, what would you guess that answer to be? If you had to pick a single number that might be the best, if you had to bet on it, what would that number come out to be? Because we're picking numbers from a random number table, which we know before we start have a couple of characteristics. We know that the table has an average of 4.5, but we also know that, ideally speaking, what is the sigma of that table? 2.87. So if you had to pick a single number, what's going to be the standard deviation of those two numbers? You might as well pick 2.87, which is the perfect answer. Now, you'd probably be wrong, but that's the best, the best number you can come up with. So you're going to do it. You're going to get a number. Then you're going to pick five numbers, which you've already done, but you can do it again. Just pick ran between five times, highlight the column, calculate the standard deviation. And again, what number would you expect to get? Something close to 2.87, but maybe not that close. It's only five numbers. Then you're supposed to do it again for 10 numbers and 15 numbers. Again, it's really, it used to be done by hand. Now, like on the computer, it's easy. 100 numbers. And I never asked for the next thing when I did it by hand, but for 1,000 numbers means you drag it down 1,000 times and ran between. And what's going to be the, the pattern that you should be noticing? That as the sample size gets larger and larger, what should be happening to the, to the standard deviation? Closer and closer to 2.87, like you may get 2.88 down here or something like that, you know, closer and closer. So that's, that's simply a way of verifying the basic theory of chapter eight where we talk about the T and how it relates to the Z. And I think that's a valuable exercise. It shouldn't take you more than two or three minutes if you know how to do um, the ran between and all the other stuff we've been doing so far.